All right, down the ladder. So Coach Machado just got elected to the Hall of Fame, um, and he was hired and brought on to, to bring some spread elements to uh, our single wings. And Drew Lashinsky, very talented player, got a talented receiver, got to throw the ball around or what. Well, has, they, has anyone seen any Tony Franklin stuff? Right, seen a little bit? Okay, well, Tony Franklin sets with the inside foot on pass pro. Right, I don't know, I, I try to think of an analogy. Like, hammer with the wrong side of the hammer, shoot free throws backwards. Like, you want to talk about things that were like, sacrilegious. Hey, I was like, this can't be done. Like, if this is true, why aren't more people doing this? Hey, and then every guy I talked to, I talked to Coach Eck, and it's like, yeah, we did a little bit here, but like, we never did it from a balanced stance. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, we're never gonna be able to figure this out. Well, then I watched all of it, and number one, it gave me a huge insight into pass protections, and 5-0, and where the back is going, and all this stuff, and it cleared up a lot of the issues that I saw us having, especially with our unbalanced line. Like, how are we going to get guys to turn? Where, where is it going to come from? Is the tight end staying in, tight end out? And so much of that knowledge of just simply the, the dynamics of the pass game was cleared up so much from just starting to delve into that. Number two, if you're in high school, I might recommend you take a look at it because it is way easier to teach than teaching a kick slide. So if you've never seen it before, if I'm in a balanced, if I'm in a balanced stance, let's say I'm in an unbalanced stance, instead of kicking and sliding, right, I'm gonna drop my inside foot and get back square. Now again, some of you are like, heads are blown, right? Like how the hell are you doing this? It worked out really well because in our balanced stances, we didn't tell a kid which hand he could have down is up to him. All we said was, if you're on the right side, I need you to have your right foot slightly back and your left foot slightly forward, right? And then on the other side was the opposite. So we would work on getting straight back and then having them set, guess what? Whether I got here like this or whether I got here like this, I was still in the same position. We had guys, Al Mayhart was 6'5", Trevor Smith, or CJ Haney was 5'7". He broad jumped like four feet at the combine. <laughs> I was like, man, your, your, AFC, your, uh, your NCSA rec recruiting thing ain't gonna matter, you jump five feet at the combine, okay? So again, we had guys that were all different body parts. We could get them on level. Hey, CJ, you may need to take two extra kind of shuffles to get back, because Al's gonna be there in three. And it cleared up a lot. And again, if I can get to this position, right, in a good loaded position with my hands ready to fire, I'll be okay. So it changed for me. I actually think we might go back to it this year, because we're, we're you know, we're flexible and we're, we're gonna have right, heels off the ground. Well, I gotta come out of that position. It might be a lot easier for us to come out of that position and get square and get settled and ready to go because I can teach from there. Um, so again, you can see that it, it proved us being on level, staying square and passing off twists. And again, I think that the Franklin system would tell you that, that you know, they get all that stuff. Well, now it added a pass nuance and protection nuance to a really heavy run offense. So again, I had to get out of my own way because it took me a lot of time to just like get over myself that you could do it this way because that's no way I've ever learned how to do it before. But obviously they've seen success. And no, I am not air raid certified. It's just the graphic that I could come up with. So again, I had some drills, but I don't have time. I was talking to Coach Han about this before, okay? Stephen Owen, um, and that, that, that picture troubles me a little bit. I'm a Wisconsin guy, but Stephen actually got me a field pass for the Wisconsin-Minnesota game uh, before the game. Stephen was one of our smartest kids, played in the state championship game with a separated shoulder. Um, went on to go to Arizona State for video, then kind of came back and wanted to go to Minnesota, so we really get him on staff there. But I, I think I talk so much that I say it like, I, all coaches talk like this, and they nod their head, and so the kids nod their head. But you don't know if they really know it or not. So we're going through a drill, and we're talking about, hey, is it box or spill? Like, Steven, what does, what does spill mean? He's like, uh, the guy plays up the field? And I thought I had this moment like, okay, if our smartest guy doesn't know it, then nobody knows it. There is not a single person on this team that has any clue what I've been saying for the last two years. So what we decided to do, right, and they've never asked to clarify. Kids don't want to ask questions anymore. Hey, they have a hard time doing it. And I can share this thing with you. So what we did is we created, and I don't think I have internet, but maybe it'll still show up, is, nope, no internet, I'll share, is a football 101. Hey, there's our accountability teams, if you guys care. Um, was, I was a list of things. Vertical, width, depth, step, stance, strike, um, 40 protection, 60 protection, etc. And we explained what it was and then added in video clips to huddle. So we had a whole presentation of football 101 terms that we've been talking about forever. 
right? Because you can say, hey, get vertical in the pass game and get vertical in the run game, and that means two different things, right? Vertical in the pass game, I need you to get back. Vertical in the run game, I need you to get forward, right? How am I creating width? How am I creating depth? And we just throw out all these terms, and I don't know if the kids know, right? So again, the smartest kid in the room in your room doesn't know these things, right? What are you doing to help everybody? We all speak a common language, and that language must be learned, right? Can your kids line up and tell you what a four, a six, an eight? Do they know the difference between seven, eight, and nine? Hey, do they know that, right? Do they know why it's a seven and then a nine? We, I, someone invented it, but we got to talk the same language. I just go with six I, okay? And then it should help every player play faster. Does it take a lot of work? Yes, it takes a lot of work. You got to create the list. You got to import. You got to find the clips, et cetera. But I think to me it's worth it because, again, if I realized in that moment that I just kept talking to the kids and talking at them and talking at them and I never checked to see if they knew what I was talking about. And that's, again, a hard thing to get over when you just think you're the smartest guy in the room. Okay? And again, all these things are really humbling experiences. All right, and then the last thing is I got involved in a group called Trench Training. Right? And Trench Training was, so Steve Stark and Glenn Derby, Steve played the 93 Rose Bowl team, uh, Glenn Derby played in the NFL for a number of years. They had seen their kids kind of growing up in the, in the specialty world and um, some of the basketball stuff. I'm like, hey, there's, there's got to be a way to help linemen because linemen are some of the bigger, right? I'd say kind of, they've always been told like, hey, don't hurt anybody because you're the bigger kid, right? Like, how do you mold those kids? So their mentality was like, we want to teach kids to live and play big. And that was something that I could get behind. They also weren't focused on, we never, like, we never do one-on-one -on -one pass rush. Um, we don't do a lot of hype. Like, I didn't list any of the kids that, like, We've, we've been a part of, because ultimately, I think in this day and age, everyone wants to claim a kid, right? I'm, I'm the reason that this kid went to this level, and we're not, right? We are part of the solution. We are part of it, but we're not the whole thing, because the coaches they play for are really good coaches, and our goal is to just help them. They are kids that are motivated and excited to do offense and defensive line stuff, whether it's at the youth level or the high school level, and we just want to be there to support them. And we don't want to take, ultimately, I don't ever want to take too much credit for that because what they do on the field for their high school ultimately dictates whether they get scholarships or not or move on to the next level. Okay, do I have to be about the hype? If you've ever been seeing the tricky camp, that's, we're not about the hype, right? That's not a thing that they're about, so we just did the, kind of the same model, right? My first line to all the kids the first day is like, hey, you're here, you're a part of all these different programs. You are never going to go back to your high school coach and tell them, well, Coach Nellis at Trench Training said this. I said, we're going to give you a bunch of tools, but they are the ones that decide that you play or not. So don't throw us under the bus because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, right? And that's our sort of, our, our cover to start. Uh, ultimately, you know, and, and we, right, Ken runs single, or wing T, right? You got wing T, you got this, like that. We all do the same blocks, right? We down block, we reach block, we pass block, right? We base block, okay? And we, how we throw them all together is, right, the fun part about it. But ultimately, we all do the same thing. Whether it's a shoulder or a hand, it doesn't matter, okay? It forced me to be a better technician because I had to start coaching kids to just what is the core of this block? What is the footwork? Hey, here's the landmark we teach. If your coach tells you something different, do it that way, but here's why we feel this is important. Hey, relationships over rivalries. We had last time, we had a group of like seven Marquette kids. Hey, you will not find a coach in the state who dislikes Marquette, and I like Coach Keith. He's a really hell of a guy. But like, I had seven, co seven Marquette kids at my trench training. They were there to get better. I'm there to coach them to get better. I don't care what color shirt they have on, okay? The kid on the right, the second tallest kid over there is a kid that left our program to go to CMH as an a, he went a freshman. As you can see by how tall I is, he's gonna be pretty good, okay? Guess what, I coach him just the way I would if he was a part of my program, okay? And that's sometimes the interesting part about when you do stuff, right, to get paid for it, some of those lines just kind of go away, okay? Um, so relationships over rivalries, it's about the kids, the kids get better, you get to be a part of their success. The relationships I have are the same as the relationship I have with the kids in our own program, and that's a really neat thing to have. It's also okay to make money to offer a valuable service. If you're good at what you do, you do it with the right intentions, right? And you deserve to get paid for it, go for it. Hey, okay? I'm telling you, like, it's okay to make some money on the side, right? We don't never, none of us in this room get paid enough for what we do, right? It's okay to find a way, right? You're not taking advantage of kids and you're doing things the right way. Um, the other thing in Wisconsin, we play so little. Going, watching, and seeing these other guys in other states. I just got my buddy from Florida. They got spring ball. Wisconsin, we have five contact days. Then we have two helmet only days, followed by three half pack days, followed by four contact, full contact days before the scrimmage and then we're into game week. Kids don't get enough football, especially offensive linemen or defensive linemen. So it's okay to do more football because we don't get enough of it. Illinois, 25 practices in the summer. Hey, Minnesota has 10, right? All these other places have so much more football, we don't have enough. 
So why not give kids a chance to do a little more football? And all these kids are going to, are, this is just a sampling of kids. Again, Brookfield East, New Berlin West, Kewaskum, uh, Kettle Moraine. You know, again, it's fun to have kids from all over because, again, they are the biggest, most awkward people in the room, right? But when they come together, they get to be part of, a, of the same style brotherhood. And that's a really cool piece of what we get to do. And hopefully they get better and enjoy along the way. Um, I have to leave about 3 o'clock. If you're around you want to talk to me, this is my contact information. Anything you have here, you want the football 101, you want any of that stuff that I've, I've shown here, you want to talk vertical sets, this is a way to get a hold of me. Uh, more than happy to, um, you know, talk about ball. All right, something that I love to do. Again, I appreciate Tony allowing me to talk. I know I talk fast. Uh, my wife told me not to do that, but we got to get it in in a good amount of time so other speakers can, can talk. So enjoy the clinic. Hope you guys learned something new. All right.